Welcome to the WT FFF Special Series, brought to you by the Z and 3D print teams from HP, where your hosts, Tom and Tracy Hazard, explore the all about the what of 3D workflows from concept to print. Hey everyone, welcome back to WT FFF, and we're going to talk about something that you and I are really passionate about, and it's that every business should get a 3D printing expert evaluation, right? They should see if it's right for their business. And we've talked to a lot of people who thought their business is not in this. They're in party supplies. And we said, ah, oh, but what if you did this? Wouldn't that be more efficient? So like there's a whole host of different industries who haven't even considered 3D printing as a possibility. And yet it would be so perfect for some of the applications, some of the customer needs they have, some of the costs they need to start saving, some of the time and energy and transportation costs of what they are going on in there. And so this is going to be one of those repurposed episodes, those episodes where we've, we've taken content that we created before and we're representing it to you, re-editing it into this. But we want to add a little context on the front here. And the first bit of context that Tom and I want to add is really looking at this in terms of today's global situation and how things are happening in the world today. So we talk about prototyping materials, lowering product lines and SKUs, inventory levels, operational efficiency, design needs. And I think we need to add transport costs, we need to add transport costs, sustainability, sort of looking at that supply chain management side of it is also one that probably needs to be added and we should address right up here at the beginning. Right. And, and supply chain management, I think, is really key in a new way and, and something new that I, I want to bring to this episode now that we didn't talk about uh, when we did the, the first version of this episode. And that is, you know, I have a real world example I want to share with you now. And actually, I can even have, you know, some photos uh, in the blog post relevant to this project. But, you know, we experienced a need ourselves to have a custom punch and die made for a certain application for our existing business today. It's something that was going to make us very efficient. And what did I do? I went and looked up any companies here in the United States that make, you know, uh, punch and die combinations. And what I found surprisingly is that, you know, businesses that made the exact right type of die and punch for our application existed. There was a company in Colorado in particular that does it but they were still very much stuck in not only traditional development and manufacturing of a die and punch, but they were also very much focused on their existing supply chain of having these pot dies and punches made over in China. And when it came to getting one that was custom made and at all slightly different, for a new application, a new custom application. Like a slightly different size. Slightly different size, slightly different shape, you know, very relatively simple variations. And I'm not saying the products are simple because they're not, but they said, well, all of our dies and punches come over from China. And unless that factory is going to make a variation, we're not going to buy it. And, and getting a custom one would be tens of thousands of dollars of development and effort in such a long timeline. I'm just like, are you kidding me? Where have you guys been? So I actually said, hey, I'm going to solve our own needs and you know disrupt this situation. And I went and really just copied uh, uh, an existing die and punch, you know, format and, and, and structure and just created that little different design and, and shape and, and size application that they could have easily done. And I was able to 3D print that in metal. I was able to do 3D print metal manufacturing of a one-off, you know, a custom punch and die and and that's a really good example of how you know what you don't just have to accept that no nope, can't do it or you're gonna it's it's gonna be this big barrier to entry for traditional processes right and this is a where a business like that could evaluate that and said is there a big need out there now maybe there wasn't a big need right maybe that's not a the perfect example and you discovered that there isn't a big need but let's say you're getting a lot of phone calls in your business for these questions of can you make a modification can you do this can you do that and you, do, you your answer is constantly no because your supply chain isn't capable of it or your own manufacturing process isn't capable of going in and making a small run or going in and 
making uh, personalized and customized solutions. This is a perfect uh, opportunity to get that kind of evaluation and say, is there a 3D print application that's right for me? And this is something that we, you know, we just did that interview with Wes Kramer and we were talking about post-processing a lot of it in the, but he's an applications engineer. And so right. they have application engineers at HP and at many other companies that are able to go in and evaluate for you the right type of solution. So do you have a solution? Is there a solution out there for the type of problem that you're having or for the type of opportunity that you might have in terms of being able to offer brand new solutions to your customers, like in terms of customization or whatever that is. But they're able to evaluate that in terms of materials, surfaces, you know, because you got to match the surfaces. So post-processing matters, you know, whether or not this is going to be cost effective for you, like all of those things need to be evaluated in the process. And I just love the idea of this. I think it's really, a, it's always a good idea to just sit back and have an analysis of your, of your industry and your business and your product lines and all of the parts and pieces of within your company and say, are we doing the most innovative thing we could be doing right now that is creating a great future plan for us to keep growing, to create certain to keep serving our community, to keep serving our clients, our, our customers, what, whoever they might be, and looking at that. So that's how you know if you know digital manufacturing might be right for your application is to go get a 3D print expert evaluation. And, you know, they've offered us up a couple of options at, at HP that I want to mention here that are, you know, no, no obligation solutions, but things that you can go check out. They have a full list of their partner network in which you can go through there and you can uh, sort of evaluate the different partners that they have. So if you're just maybe looking for a service bureau, you're looking for a metal manufacturer, just some, some kinds of things where you might be able to just say, hey, I want to just test something out and try something myself. Let me start there. They've got a list for us and they've got a link for that. That's going to be in the blog post for this episode. So at 3D Start Point, and then they have application engineers and people are ready there to come to connect with you. So if you want to learn more about the technology, if you want to have an app, if you have an application that you think might be suitable for multi-jet fusion or you know any of their processes, and if you want to have a 3D printing expert contact you, they've offered that up as an opportunity for our listeners here. So I want to make sure that you know that that's there at the blog at the blog post for this episode at 3dstartpoint.com. And you know, Tracy, I think it warrants a little more emphasis on this application engine situation because at HP we know from speaking with them about it obviously with Wes is that this is somebody's full-time job right. to help you as a business you know evaluate and understand hey is this a good fit for you will this work in your application you don't have to have an internal resource to really figure this out before you reach out to a company and find out if this is really gonna be a benefit for you. It's their job to do that full time. So please reach out. This is available to you. Right. So in this episode that you're, we're going to play for you now, you're going to hear about our areas that we think are ripe for evaluation. And we want to add to that, of course, the idea of sustainable supply chains to, for mass customization, those couple of areas that we just talked about here. But, you know, there are so many different things for you to be thinking about right now and, and thinking about like everything in our businesses are being are up in the air. They're up for negotiation. They're up for evaluation. Think about it. Is there an area that's really important to you that you could be doing more on? You could be more profitable in. You could serve more customers with. You could be serving maybe even in a more uh, remote distribution situation or a local distribution situation, right? And and that's really where we want you to be able to, to take a listen to this and see if maybe a 3D printing expert evaluation is right for you. Hi, this is Tom and Tracy on the WTFFF 3D Printing Podcast. Do you need an expert evaluation? You know, after our episode where we talked about the possibility of disruptive technology really changing an industry, you know, it got us really talking and thinking and debating about whether or not every business ought to have an evaluation and whether that is some kind of advisory service or an expert review from a design standpoint. And we've done a couple of these, just like taking a look at people's product lines and saying, hey, does it make more sense for you to do a 3D print run? Or can you do a specialized program with this? Or should we really start slower and do a limited run to begin with? So we've been looking at it as an expert evaluating products but also as evaluating businesses. So 
thinking about it, whether or not it's saving you money from a prototype standpoint, like are you spending too much money on that and should you be shifting over to using 3D printing for that either in-house or with the service? That may be just scratching the surface though. Right, I agree. You know, I mean, because I think that the reality, I mean, let's face it, there are a great many manufacturing techniques, methods, and equipment that really have not changed all that much in a hundred years. Right. Okay. I mean, seriously, I mean, think about injection molding and I don't know the exact date that injection molding machines first started, but I'm pretty sure it's in the early 20th century, somewhere in whether 1920s or 30s, somewhere in there is at least when it was happening. And then take metal machining, metal lathes, metal milling machines. These things have been around for a very long time. And I think you can track a lot of modern manufacturing equipment to the availability of electric motors and electricity that really came in in major way in the early 20th century. So while yes, there are computers that have advanced what those machines can do and computer controlled milling machines, CNC machines, yes, that changed things. But still at the end of the day, you are milling metal or you're milling wood or you're molding plastic or forming plastic and stamping metal and forming metal, all that. So there hasn't been a major new manufacturing player on the scene that has changed things as much as 3D printing has. Or can. I think that we want to be really careful. Well, that what I mean is the capability. Just, the yeah. capability is here and that has changed. Right. right. And that's what we really want to caution here is that's what we're talking about is that the fact that you may be thinking that it's too early and you're like just going to wait it out and see. But you may find yourself out of business in the process. And for so many reasons. And that's why you really should find ways to evaluate it and walk into it so that you can see if your industry or your product line or your business model or your design process, all of those things are ripe for a 3D print transition. So whether or not you should be bringing those things in-house, whether or not you should be using service bureaus, but it's time for you to evaluate, I think, five areas of the company. That's what I've kind of come to in my mind. Five areas that it's time to evaluate. There's probably more, but those are the key ones for me. Well, let's hear. What are the five? So I think the first one is very obvious, your prototyping process, right? That's just super obvious. It's not just in my mind from what we've been learning and what we've been doing for many, many years years now is it's not just that it's the length of time it takes you to prototype. It's whether or not you're doing a lot of design iterations. It's the cost of all of those things. There's a whole bunch of factors into whether or not you need to evaluate. And it's not just whether or not you should put a 3D printer in. It's like sort of the overall process of prototyping that needs to be looked at and evaluated. And we looked at it from the standpoint on, does this make sense for some of our furniture clients? And you're talking about very large machines and we need a very large 3D printer. And does this make sense? But from our standpoint, it didn't make sense in that particular case because we could prototype faster with the processes we were currently using and we had all the things we possibly needed and the cost was down. It didn't make sense. But that doesn't mean your business, it won't make sense. And it's time for you to look at that, whether or not you have looked at it in the past, time for you to look at it again. I think the second thing is expansion of materials. Like it's time to be really looking at the possibility that the way that you were making something before, you were unable to use materials that had particular properties or the way that you are manufacturing something is it limited your capabilities in terms of properties of materials. So just that, just looking at evaluating what you can make and what properties you wish you had might be just a key way to say, hey, it's time for me to test this out without like going in full force into rebuilding something, remaking something. Let's test this out and see if there really is either market viability for it or functionality viability or time to change my product up. I think product line is the most important one you can evaluate because if the design of the product, that would be number three. You know, the design of the product, how you're designing products, whether or not the products have the characteristics like we were talking about in the sports equipment episode, now is your time to be able to build in user-focused features and functions that you are no longer manufacturing constrained out of being able to design for. So really taking a look at your product line, but taking a look at it from a competitive risk assessment. So can my industry, can my product line be disrupted by an upstart who just starts 3D printing? That's a really scary idea. Yeah, no, to me, that's one of the, and, and I know we're getting off in the middle of your five things, but that's what I was thinking about just a few minutes ago as you were saying something else is that this is not only something that 
you should consider looking at in terms of your business because of this new technology. But I think it's even more dire than that. If you as a business are not looking at this, I think you are really making yourself vulnerable to attack from another company that's going to come and eat your lunch. While you're thinking, oh, you're a healthy company because you have all these assets, you've invested in all this equipment, and you're doing well with it year over year. Yeah, but what if your assets are now dinosaurs and the best that they can do is gather dust in some museum, right? Like, yeah, when, they're and, no longer valuable. And you can't sell them for near what you bought them for in the used equipment market. But beyond that, that would be the worst situation because that's at the end of life and you're liquidating your company because you don't have a business anymore. But I'm just talking about somebody else taking away market share because they're offering something you haven't even considered. Right. And hand in hand with that product line evaluation is the 80-20 rule for me. So the idea that you may be carrying too much inventory in your product line on things that may be serving you well from being a market presentation, like I want to have these things because they show really well in the marketplace and they attract customers to me. But at the end of the day, nobody's buying them. Having an ability to offer a mixed line between 3D printed on demand for those cool things that may be an extended lead time, like an extra day, we're not talking about months, but not having any inventory carrying on those products and then having a heavy inventory on the ones that you know are going to sell 80% of the volume. That in and of itself is a super cost savings measure that could change the profitability outcome of your business instantly. And so that's worth looking at 3D printing from an investment standpoint. So I lumped that all in product. Now on number four, I want to talk a little bit further about like that operational efficiency. You might be getting really operational efficiency. You might really need to head to a zero waste idea or low waste because it's not totally zero either in 3D printing. I mean, there's still in some capacities there are, but there's lower waste. You have other types of things that you need to do and you need to look at that from an operation standpoint like inventory balancing. Inventory is an operational improvement. Having less warehouse space, having less carrying costs, all of those things, operational improvements. If that can come from switching over to a 3D or a portion of your line to 3D printing, could be a tremendous difference to your bottom line. So there again, expert evaluation, looking at the return on investment and the cost balancing of that because it's a different cost model, one that's not so clear to you because your cost of goods might be higher, but your carrying costs might be zero. And people don't understand that. I can tell you, I just spent a whole week with a bunch of entrepreneurs trying to explain to them why having inventory for three months is more costly and they need to discount that product and get it out of there faster that their turns count more than anything else they could possibly do. And you have to run the math for them to get them to see it and understand it. So, and then number five is the obvious one and that's design. I mean, it's just obvious that it's going to change the way we design and it is already changing the way we design and its capabilities are so strong. But, you know, you have to be looking at those stacking S-curves. We talk about that all the time. It's like, what is your future? Where is your advanced research? Where is that going? And maybe that doesn't mean that you have somebody in-house to be looking at that for you. I mean, I really loved the Moxie model with John Rich because that really set up a precedent that you could have someone who's already an expert in 3D printing, analyzing it, looking at it and saying, is this right for my business? Is this right for my product? Is this right for my customers? and not be having to bring this in-house and spend years in advanced research. First off, getting your feet wet and, and getting a capability in 3D printing and then figuring that out. And the flip side of that is, is that it's almost easier and better to have it be an outside perspective. I think that that is really so underrated an opportunity for existing businesses to have a fresh set of eyes come in from the outside and take a look and analyze and make suggestions. I think companies don't realize it and they get so closed off. They do. And you have, again, that not invented here syndrome is certainly a big problem as well with them. But you just get set in your ways. You have blinders on, you have paradigms and... I think just as an efficiency move for a company, you know, yeah, you're the owner of a company, you can assign someone to champion a project and go and do research and get it done, but it will not get done as fast or as well as if you hire someone from the outside who no, has that expertise and knowledge already. Yeah, because they have to learn everything about the industry and then they have to apply it and then they have to honestly be performing for you. So there's that pressure because in advanced research, it's just not a pay for performance kind of job. And right. so that weighs on a lot of people and that sort of pressure to do that.
the best way to do it, if you're going to do it internally and not hire outside experts, is to build a skunk works of sorts within your company that is sort of on an island or in a silo. Right. To and, be able to do it without the day-to-day pressures of the rest of the business and the performance requirements, et cetera. Right. But if you're not that big or if you are really just concerned about like, hey, I got to have a future business plan. I've got to make sure that I'm future focused on where I'm going and all this investment money that I've taken in or this investment in time and my profits that I've built into my own business. Is it going to have longevity or am I at risk? This is the time for you. This is the perfect time, actually, as the market is shifting This is time for you to get that expert, that 3D print expert evaluation or that assessment if you want and have somebody just come in, give an evaluation, give a report on where they see it going, how you fit within that, how your business fits within that. I think every business needs to realize doing this kind of evaluation or getting an expert analysis is really an insurance policy of sorts. I look at it as in a way you're talking about how do you value your company? Well, you're a part of your valuation, and this is very, it's fuzzy math at best. Don't get me wrong. People who do valuations for startups or for investment, I mean, that's pretty fuzzy math on the whole. But the reality is, is that the risk assessment side of it is very telling. When you look at a valuation of a company, what forms it the most is how at risk you are of success, of competition, of market penetration, like all of those things are at there. And that's the same thing here. How at risk are you? from maintaining your current market position or market value, your cost efficiencies and all of those things compared to new entrants, early entrants, or even other businesses who were smarter and got invested faster into this than you did. You don't want to be behind the eight ball. It's a bad place to be. (laughs) You want to be a leader, not a follower. That's right. But you don't also want to be the leader who's out there in front, paving all the way and educating everyone in the process because that is an expensive proposition. So you no, want no, to no. follow at it's the right moment. It's the difference moment. between the leading edge and the bleeding edge. <laughs> exactly. Right? Exactly. Well, we hope you found this of interest and we're going to have the blog post, which will refer to a couple of the other episodes we talked about. That will be on 3dstartpoint.com. Thanks for listening, everybody. We'll talk to you next time. This has been Tom and Tracy. On the WTFFF 3D Printing Podcast. Thanks for listening to the WTFFF special series brought to you by the Z and 3D print teams from HP. You can access all the resources mentioned in this episode and all the other episodes in this series by going to 3dstartpoint.com slash HP. We invite you to reach out to us on social at 3D Startpoint and at Z by HP and let us know what you are creating in 3D. 